Hi, let's talk about PlayStation 1 development. Now, normally I don't do this sort of video because uh, mostly I hate the sound of my own voice, but given the, what we are doing here, it might be better to actually show how it works. Um, and in order to get started with PlayStation 1 development, you usually have to install a lot of tools and deal with a lot of settings manually. Um, and in order to help with this, there is a Visual Studio Code extension that has been created. Um, Visual Studio Code, if you don't know about it, is a very, very nice editor in order to help with your code. And its most powerful feature is to have a lot of extensions. Now, here we are going to demonstrate how you can use Visual Studio Code in order to develop for the PlayStation 1. And in order to do so, I have created this brand new virtual machine that has absolutely nothing installed on it in order to show that you don't need to do anything special in order to get started. So let's start with downloading Visual Studio Code. We are going to install it. And I highly recommend using Visual Studio Code in general, in all cases, because uh, <coughs> besides just being able to edit code, it has so many features that it's really, really useful. So let's get to it. So this is how Visual Studio Code looks like. We are going to start by setting our basic environment, but very quickly we are going to go and search for the PSX dev extension. And here it is. Um, we are going to simply install it. This is currently version 0.2.2. Hopefully there will be more as we progress. Um, but in order to get started, this is already pretty good. Let's install this. All right. And as it says, the first thing you need to do really is to open the control panel. In order to do so, you press control shift P in order to take the command palette of Visual Studio and you start typing <coughs> the command you want to run. So here in our case, psx.dev and there's a show panel command. Here's the panel. And it has three main tabs. This is the welcome one that has a few links, that has a few uh, pieces of documentation, and also a few utility buttons. Then it has the templates themselves. And the templates are going to let you create stub projects in order to really get started. It currently features three templates. Hopefully we'll get more in the future. And the tools tabs just breaks down all the tools that the extension can install for you. Now, the tools panel right now doesn't show version information. Hopefully in the future, uh, we'll have better information about what's, what's installed. Um, but let's just look at installing our template. Now, the create button is grayed out because the tools are not installed. The required tools are the minimum set of tools required in order to simply build the template. And the recommend tool, recommended tools are what's needed in order to be able to debug your extension, your uh, project. So let's go ahead and let's try installing the recommended tools for this template. And as you can see, it's get going. Um, various tools are being installed for you. I have to click a few buttons in order to process all this. And there's an extension that it requires the native debug extension. So we are also going to install it continue installing various tools. Let's go for it. I'm just going to use all of the default. Maybe people want to change some of that, but that's fine as it is. There we go. Okay, I don't need the release notes. And let's still install this one. And now we have a pop-up that says some tools require a boot to work properly. So let's do that. The virtual machine is currently rebooting. There we go. And we're back. So let's see, 
Uh, this video is a bit too big. Let's shrink it down a bit so that it fits again on the screen. There we go. All right, so let's open Visual Studio Code again and continue where we were, where we left off. So the panel is trying to open again and we go back to the templates. All the tools did not install because it was requiring reboot. So we are just going to continue. So now it's installing the rest of the tools that it requires. And now you can see the create button just change color. It's now able to create because uh, we have all the tools needed. So if I just click create right now, it's going to say, well, I need a project name. So let's go and file one project name and click that create button. So it's currently training a bit. There we go. So um, it created for us a little project, a little skeleton of a project, and it has a little readme that we can have a look in order to understand um, how to get started. And the first thing we are going to do is do the build. Is that? Oh, it needs to be anyway. Yep, trust folder. There we go. Let's go back. Build in debug. There it is. Um, and now if I go back here, it says we can you know, various different options that we have in order to build stuff. And finally, we can press F5 in order to, to debug. But in order to do this, we need to have a debug server. So for example, we can run this in order to have a debug server running. Let's allow access. There it is. And now I'm going to hit F5. And we are starting to debug our software. Um, I'm, we can see that the environment has information about the various variables. Here, I can even start tracing. This vector right now is uninitialized, which is why all of the values are bogus. If I just hit F10 in order to go to the next line, now this vector is properly initialized because the initializer has been called. And we can uh, even continue placing breakpoints all around the place. Uh, for example, go here and look at the values that we have, rotation, the whole rotation vector, and so on and so on. If I don't have any breakpoint and I just let it run, the software is currently running onto the emulator, probably. If I go back to the uh, Visual Studio Code, I can even pause and continue placing breakpoints in order to continue debugging my code. There we go. Um, I'm going to stop now debugging by closing this and closing this. We have also a lot of uh, useful information. If we continue going back to the panel, we have another tool that's not installed by default but we may want to do that, clang-d. Let's do and install this. And clang-d is going to uh, install a few more dependencies by itself. There you go. We'll reload the window. And now if we look at the output, uh, let's install this as well. Popular extension for C, C++. There we go. 
we have even more information being displayed. So we can see, for example, this is displayed by Clang D. We have information about the um, various pieces of our arrays. We have type information being displayed, uh, viable names, and we can even go and do things like go to definition and it's showing up exactly where this is being defined inside of our headers and so on and so forth. We can uh, properly navigate the source code very nicely. Um, so there it is. Um, this is like an, a, a nice, nice little example of how this works. Um, yeah, we're going to disable IntelliSense because ClangD is conflicting with this. This is why ClangD is not enabled by default because it conflicts with IntelliSense. Not everybody wants to do that necessarily. Um, we can try another example real quick where we are going to try another template. Here, for example, there we go. And we are going to go through the same process. Let's see, I'm guessing the workspace is not trusted. Yep, enable workspace, trust folder and continue. There we go. And here we have another piece of software. We can compile it as well. Now, what I just want to quickly demonstrate is the ability of showing the debug console. There it is, it has been compiled. So we are going to launch the emulator once again for debugging. And we are going to press F5. Now we can see here in the terminal the uh, output of our uh, emulator. And if I press F11 right now, I can start tracing inside of the library. And messages like this, for example, should display properly. Here we go. Um, we have the printf that just displayed over here, uh, which can be useful when debugging in general. Anyway, so that's the ID, and we have uh, our basic project that is being set up, able to just run code, debug it, and trace through the various definitions of variables and so on. So hopefully this can get you going into PlayStation 1 development much faster than trying to set up all the tools manually. And uh, if there is some demand for that, we can create more video later in order to explain how to do more advanced things with all this. But really, this was meant to show the basics. Um, let us know, join the Discord server, or just ask questions if you have any, and we'll uh, be more than happy to help. Bye.